Uh, thank you so much for being here today. <laughs> it's amazing you guys showed up. And uh, if you're visiting with, from Westside or Trinity or wherever, anybody shut down, thank you so much for coming. Uh, actually, I think those churches are, 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 are meeting today. But uh, what an uh, amazing time to be in Nebraska, isn't it great? That's why we live here. Absolutely. So here we are. We're starting off that. Isn't it great here, Luke Pruitt? That's worth, that is worth driving in a blizzard for right there. Amazing stuff. Great stuff. Now, we have a lot of singles that come to Stonebridge, and, and I care a lot about you, and I care a lot about the decisions that you're making, especially if you're thinking about getting married. And, and uh, today, we're going to take a look at you know, uh, finding that person at last. I family, finally found the, the love of my life. The Bible tells us that we need to be very careful about who we choose as friends, right? That uh, the, the company we keep can corrupt us and push us down wrong paths and that kind of thing. And I think it's doubly important that, that we really consider, uh, you know, who we're going to marry. So I want to just a couple of things before we get into it, just kind of some, I, I think some, some stuff that we, you know, I, I'm going to dispel these myths. First of all, that God's going to choose who you marry. God's gonna, God doesn't choose who you marry. Uh, I think he cares about it. And I think he has some ideas. Like these be, uh, I think there's a bunch of folks he'd go, yeah, yeah, marry them. Now, I think there's a million people he goes, don't. And he's like, put, whoa, 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 whoa. And I think there's constantly he's trying to get your attention and say, well, those are some red flags. Those are some stuff you should put the brakes on right now. But there, I think there's a lot of people he'd say, that's a good choice. I think that's a great choice. So don't just think, well, you know, there's one person out there and, and uh, you know, that, that, if, uh, that if I find Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright, you know, oftentimes we might find them, but they're already married, right? It's like, uh, see, that's what happened with Angelina Jolie, right? You know, it's like, oh, I, can't, I guess I can't marry Brad Pitt now, huh? I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't know, who is she married to? Brad Pitt, yeah. I play trivia crack. I know what's going on. Not very well lately. Linda has been destroying me in trivia crack, which is why we're going counseling tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm over five. So another thing is that love alone is not a reason to marry. I talk with a lot of people that, that ignore the red flags because they're in love. And of course you're going to be in love with the person you want to marry. That's I'm not saying. And I think that love should be a part of it. Oftentimes when you, I ask couples, why are you getting married? They will say this, because we love each other. And I think, and then I'm waiting for the next thing to come out, but that's all they got. We love each other. And I'm like, you think, no, no, that's, well, he's got good abs. All right. And she's hot. Okay. Now they don't say that to the pastor, but I know it's like, you know, looking at it. But love is a choice. Just because you love someone doesn't mean you should marry them. People fall in and out of love all the time. In fact, it's quite possible, and, and you don't know, you don't, nobody's going to admit this, but probably you fell in love with somebody else before you married the person you're married to. Maybe even a bunch of them. It's just in and out all the time. So what does the Bible say about finding the love of our lives? Number one, and I think these are deal breakers. I think these are super important. Uh, there needs to be spiritual unity. That means that we must believe the same thing about God. You will not know real intimacy without it. Your relationship with God is going to be the most important decision you ever make. And, and once you ma if you make the decision to follow uh, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's going to pretty much clear the path for all the decisions you're going to make, whether it's financial, raising your kids, how to handle uh, uh, you know, stress, all that kind of stuff comes as a re result of our following Jesus as our Lord. If we're not on the same page with that, and so here he says, I want to protect your relationships and that God is going to be the center, he's going to be the glue that keeps us together. 2 Corinthians 6.14, probably the, the most hated verse for singles. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And the reason we don't like that, because it narrows down the playing field. Like, oh, great. Well, then in my, you know, like where, I, the people I know, 
90%, boom, right? Because we know about 80, 90% of the people in Omaha don't even go to church. It's like 90% just gone away. I want to marry a believer, but you say I can't. Well, well uh, you know, I, I, I want to marry a believer, but I can't find them. How am I supposed to do this? Um, I'm not much, I'm very, uh, I used to be kind of casual about this, but I am not casual anymore about this. I know the arguments, I know the hopes that someday he's going to change, that someday she's going to change. Um, it has been my experience, and I've been around this for a long time, that if they don't change before you get married, it probably won't. As much as you'd like. In fact, I think it gets, I think what happens is you, you date and you say, well, I'd really like you to go to church with me. And you know what you do when you date somebody? You go along with it, right? Because you're dating, you're trying to impress. And you say, okay, I'll go to church with you. And then you show up and you sit there and you kind of like, you know, and, but once you get engaged, once you get married, you don't have to go, you don't have to date anymore. You don't have to impress anybody. You don't even have to show up at church anymore. You're married. And so why would I, in, you know, since I never made a commitment to that before. National surveys, and why is this important? National surveys tell us that one out of every two and a half marriages will fail. But if you are, are a believer and you attend church uh, together and you pl- pray regularly and read the Bible, the divorce rate goes from one out of two and a half people times to one out of every 1,105 marriages. So don't gamble on the odds. If you marry without spiritual unity, the odds are less than that, uh, that in less than 10 years, you will be divorced. If you stay together, you'll be on shallow level because you're not sharing the number one thing in your life. Well, what do I do if I'm already married to somebody who's not a believer? Well, you love them and you pray. No nagging. Nobody's ever been one to Christ because of nagging. Don't, don't do that. Live out your faith. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? Well, no, they can't. You can't walk together. If you, until you degree, uh, agree on which way we're going to go. Well, I want to go left. Well, I'm going to go right. Well, then we can't. How are we supposed to walk together? We can't. And God put you here on the planet for a purpose, and he gifted you and shaped you and called you to do his work. Ephesians 2.10 says, if we are God's masterpiece, we are created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he's planned for us long ago to do. He's given us a purpose in life. And as a Christ follower, we are to discover what our purpose is and live that out. And when we get to heaven, he's not going to ask us, so who did you marry? He's going to say, how'd you do on that purpose thing? Well, I wanted to, but I, my, my, I married, she, she didn't want me to. I wanted to, but I you know, I wanted to do that Mexico thing, but I tried and pushed, you know, but I got a lot of pushing when it came, like expensive and like, a, you know, and I, but so I never, I didn't even live that out. First Peter 4.10, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. I know what God called me to do, but I can't because I, I'm married to somebody who's not a believer. It's a huge regret. However, when you marry a, another follower of Christ, when you connect together in your faith, there's huge amount of energy that comes from that. I mean, all of a sudden, it's pretty easy to, to align yourself up financially and morality stuff and, and uh, direction in life when you're a believer. And there's, you know, ministry is it's like a launching pad for that. So when you say, you know what, I really think that I want to go to Mexico, would you want to go that? Well, you know, that sounds like something you want to do, but I'm all for that. It's great energy there. I was thinking about serving in the children's area. Great energy for that. Now, we're all going to marry a sinner. I certainly did. (laughs) Two imperfect people do not make a perfect marriage. Everyone's broken. Now, some are more broken than others. See, we even say that in the marriage vow, for better, for worse. Now, some of us didn't realize how worse it was, but we're all broken. 80% of separations and divorce come because one or both of us are emotionally unhealthy. It's usually emotionally immaturity. So I want to give you a, a, a few little red flags as you're dating, you know, uh, uh, that you're looking around and there's some little flags that come up. Uh, these, these should be red flags, right? 
Uh, uncontrolled anger in the person that you're dating. Uncontrolled anger. Proverbs 22, uh, 24 says, don't befriend angry people or associate with hot-tempered people. Yeah, I know, but I like bad boys. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Yeah, he's, got a, he's got a little bit of a temper, but it's only when he drinks. See, we all of a sudden begin to justify some things. Well, you know, it's not so bad, you know. And um, but eventually, that anger may not be directed at you right now, but it probably will be in the future because you will be the closest person to that situation. Proverbs twenty three twenty. Another thing, uh, take a look at uncontrolled anger. If you're dating somebody who's got some anger struggles, there, um, addictions. Proverbs twenty three twenty. Do not cross with drunkards or feast with gluttons. I know that people can be fooled on this. Some things can be kept secret for a long time. I do think that's why it's important to date somebody for a while. Uh, this mentions food and drinking, but there's lots of other things that we can be addicted to, whether it's shopping or video games. I mean, well, there are lots of lists that go in. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, uh, you know, I'm just, again, I'm saying these, these are red flags. It's not meaning that we can't overcome these things in our lives. But I would say uh, the, uh, uh, the majority of the folks that I see on a, on, uh, in, in counseling, this is probably the number one thing that I deal with with, with couples is addiction. Um, bitterness, another red flag. Hebrews twelve fifteen. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root or bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. If you're dating a person who has bitterness, maybe something about the past that they're not letting go of. I promise that you, when you get married, it will be more intense. A girl who has issues with her dad is going to take it out on her husband. And ladies, if you want to know what, you're, what uh, that boy you're dating is like right now, uh, you watch and see how he treats his mom and dad. See if he gives them some respect. See how he treats the parents. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I'm not marrying the parents. Yes, you are. <laughs> you get them for free. You get them for free. They're going to come along. So you take a look, go, hmm, oh, uh, you know, right? And, and I think that's one of the most, uh, you know, things that we don't typically realize that we get in that relationship. I think that's one of the things that attracted me to Linda uh, right away. Her mom and dad were awesome people. Her dad uh, and mom, generous and kind and healthy and, um, you know, strong relationship and great marriage. And I knew that I could go and be, and be in their home and be myself. And they would love me and forgive me um, because they were Christ followers. And I needed that. I really, in fact, I, I appreciate that so much about um, her family. Um, Proverbs 20, 20 says, if you insult your father or mother, your light will be snuffed out in total darkness. Um, that means that you will miss the life that God intended. And we talk about this, you know, that, that uh, uh, one of the top commandments, you know, out of the top 10 list he's, he gives us is to honor your mother and father. And, um, you know, it's right there in the don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie. Number five is honor your mother and father. But my parents don't deserve to be honored. Um, maybe you don't even know them. Maybe they're alcoholics. Maybe they abused you. Regardless of whether they were good or bad or terrible, God had used them somehow to create you. So I'm not telling you to honor the sin or the abuse or the neglect but God is more interested in making new uh, in your life, and he can do that. So take a look at how the respect thing goes in the, in the home. Does he respect his mom? Does he sass, talk back, bad mouth? I, I think that's a huge deal because it, it's, a, it's a symptom there of immaturity. Um, the number one problem in marriages is selfishness. I can do whatever I want. Immaturity oftentimes comes along in the marriage. Proverbs 18, 1 says, uh, uh, unfriendly people care only about themselves. They lash out at common sense. Proverbs 15, uh, 27, greed brings grief to the whole family, but those who hate bribes will live. Greedy people 
uh, will bring trouble into a marriage. So again, I, again, that selfishness. I say if you're mar- if you're dating somebody who is a selfish person, who just talks about themselves all the time, or it's always about them, all uh, money stuff. Um, it's pretty easy to spot in a relationship. Materialistic people are pretty easy to find. And I would say you might want to run from that because, again, if you're greedy or materialistic, the, the problem that comes into the marriage then is debt. And, again, money issues is a massive struggle. And any, if, you, if you can't get that right, you're, you're going to really struggle in your relationship because you're constantly fighting about it. That's why one of the things we offer here is Financial Peace University. In fact, I want it to be required for everyone who gets married uh, here at Stonebridge that they have to go through that class. I think it gets everybody together. And if we can solve that problem alone, we're going to be able to take care of most of the issues that struggle in a marriage. But until we get that solved, it's going to be a a real trouble. Generosity, the Bible tells us, brings prosperity. A person who's generous. And again, you can spot that person right away. Are they generous with their time? Uh, Or is it all about that? Is they generous with their money? Or is it all about them? Now the last thing, Proverbs 20, verse 7. The godly walk with integrity. Blessed are their children who follow them. The godly walk with integrity. Uh, are you, uh, is this person a person of integrity? Are they a truth teller or are they a liar? Do you want your children to be blessed someday? Then marry someone who tells the truth. Love is based on trust. Trust is that most fragile, it's the most fragile thing in any relationship. And it can be easily broken by a lie. Now, I did not mention the thing. Here's some things that typically we look for in, 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 a, in a person we want to marry. Are they sexy? Do they have great abs? Right? I'm not even mentioning that. Because why? Sexiness will go away. Unless, of course, you are in Hollywood and you can get that fixed. You know, you know a good plastic surgeon. You can take care of some of those issues. Our society says to marry somebody beautiful, and if you do, then your marriage is going to be great. The myth that Hollywood spews out is that that's all you need is romance, right? There's this uh, movie coming out, Fifty Shades of Grey, and I, I, it's flooring me to see the number of people who are lined up. I think it comes out on Valentine's Day, for goodness sakes. Because that we th- we're told that's all we need in a relationship. Boy, if that was in that, and if that was enough, then every marriage in Hollywood would be awesome. Okay, now I know some of you are going. I, I hear your list. There's nobody out there like that. I see the list. That's great. It's great, but there's nobody out. I'm never going to find anybody like that. Well, I did. I did. You can find somebody like that. And I would say, you don't have to settle for whatever. I'm no settling on this thing. My wife says over and over to young ladies that do not, you need to hold out for fabulous. Hold out for fabulous. Use that line. Parents, use it. You need to hold out for fabulous. Yeah, but he's so... She's, okay, and I, I, I totally get that. But I want to remind you of something. A bad marriage is a lot worse than being single. Hear me. A bad marriage is a lot worse than just being single. I had a guy after the first service come up to me and says, that's my life right now. You tell him, you tell him. By the way, most of the stuff we talked about today can be found out pretty much. I, th- I think that the, these flags can be, I think you could spot these things in two dates. I think you could spot them that quickly. I don't think you're going to need three or four to figure this out. 
most of the stuff, and again, some of it won't be, but most of this, uh, you'll, you'll know right away, is he a selfish person or is she a selfish person, right? Is, is there some bitterness, and you know, and all of a sudden she's talking about it, he's talking about it, and I don't know, you know, and all of a sudden, and, and you catch a little lie here and a little lie there and a little bit there, and all of a sudden we go, oh, yeah, but, oh, yeah, but, and, and again, the longer than we date, the harder it will be to get out of that situation. So I think you can know right away. Are they a, do they love Jesus? I think, you can, I think that you should discover that immediately. Now, you may, it's like, okay, well, what, what, do I, what do I do about this? And it's like, I say, well, I don't know. I'm just telling you, this is a major decision, and I want you to get it right. In fact, I want you someday to stand right here with me or with a pastor of your choice, and, and you will look at each other, and you go, ah, at last. And I remember, you'll think back maybe to a talk on a stupid blizzard Sunday where you said, you know what, I, I listened to that and I'm thinking, ah, I'm going to hold out for fabulous. And you might look at me and I'll look at you and I go, yeah, you did. You married, a, you married the love of your life. All right. Let's pray. Oh, thank you guys so much for... Um, um, I want to thank you for Linda. I'm grateful for uh, the way she uh, does life and loves you and loves our children and loves me. I'm thankful that she's a kind and generous person and that she doses out a lot of grace. And uh, I'm grateful for that. I know a lot of people in this room are dealing and struggling in these areas. I don't even pretend to understand how to navigate being single in, in our culture today and the pressures and the uh, belief system that so many of us uh, bring into the deal. And it, uh, it's just, to me, it's an enormous amount of stress and concern. And I pray that uh, if, if there's some folks here right in the middle of this whole deal, that they'll take a look at it and see how it's going and be honest at least today their relationship. Lord, we uh, thank you so much for um, the kindness and the grace that you've extended to us through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.